Hi, so this is not how I imagined doing a TED talk and it's not how I think any of us imagined this year was going to be. But I am here and I'm going to share my story with you. 14 years ago, I was handcuffed to a bed. I had my clothes taken off me and I was put in a gown and I had my belongings taken. I had just been admitted to a psychiatric ward because I tried to numb my pain permanently. That was probably the first time that I felt that visual image I had just given you, I felt matched what was going on for me inside, trapped and handcuffed. Do you remember the first time you ever felt emotional pain or did something to ease that pain, numb it. I do, and I was 10 years old, and I was going to my dance class, and I had my favorite t-shirt on. It was two little ducks, and uh, they looked like little ballet dancers. And I thought, oh, I'll be able to wear this today. So I went confidently into my dance class, and my teacher said to me, oh, that's a really cute shirt. I said, thank you, because it was but you're gonna to have to take it off. And I remember just freezing in that moment thinking, but then you'll see me and I'll be exposed. And my stomach dropped. If you can imagine, whatever age you are, just standing in a leotard with your peers, how exposing that can be and what that feels like. And I couldn't cope with that. I wanted to do everything I was doing but I also knew that I couldn't cope with the pain that came with it. So how do you deal with that? My mum came and picked me up and I begged her. I, pro I probably threw a massive tantrum to get what I wanted. So I begged her to take me to McDonald's and I went to McDonald's and she waited outside. I ran in, I got a happy meal, but as quickly as I said, can I have a happy meal? I asked for a burger on the side. And when I got that food, I took that burger and I unwrapped it and then I, I inhaled it so fast. I threw the rubbish away and got into the car like nothing had happened and continued to eat my Happy Meal. I had forgotten what had happened in that dance class. That was the beginning of me numbing myself and my pain. I love hockey. Even though I was a professional golfer, hockey was my first love and I just, I just loved it, it's my favourite sport. And so when I was selected to play for Scotland at 14, it, it was the best thing ever. I can still feel that excitement today. We were coming back from the European Championships and our coach was giving us one-to-one -one feedback, constructive feedback, you know, for the next few years that we could work on moving forward. So I was looking forward to that. I'd also scored my first goal for Scotland and that was so exciting. So I went in there eager to hear what she had to say. I cannot remember what she said to me apart from this. She said, watch your weight. Watch your weight. I mean, I don't even know what that means today if I say to someone, watch your weight. And I said to her, am I fat? And she said, no, but just watch it. Hmm. And I'm thinking, I'm now not working or thinking about any skills or anything like that. Now all I'm thinking is I need to watch my weight. That was the most important thing. Enter bulimia. Bulimia. Hmm. And let me tell you about bulimia and shatter. Any illusion or idea you might have around it, it's not talked about enough and it's super important it's super important to hear about it because it's a very hidden hidden disease bulimia creates an immense amount of shame when you already have a huge amount of shame it teaches you to lie to deceive to manipulate you always have to be three steps ahead of something god forbid you get found out it also, I also found myself 
performing because I had to hide myself. So I was never ever myself. I was so disconnected from myself. I was putting on performances daily. Um, so as an actor, I knew how to do that. I'll give you an example. So I went into the grocery store, the supermarket, and I picked up the trolley because we don't use a basket when you're bulimic and you're binging, you need a trolley. And I filled it up with all the food that I knew that would go down easily and come up easily. Trust me, I've learned the hard way with that. And I go up to the, to the checkout and I suddenly would see someone behind me and the cashier. And then I thought, I need to hide this. They might find out that I'm going to go to my car and binge on this and throw up. It was probably the furthest things from their minds, but you become so self-consumed and that's all you can think about. So I picked up my phone, which I'd already put on silent. And I said, hi, it was just to say, I've, I've got all the food for the party. Do I, okay, yeah. Leaving enough pause, by the way, for the person to answer, even though no one was there. Aha, uh -huh. brilliant. Oh, shall I get some extra chocolate bars? Great. Okay, bye. And I'd hang up the phone and I'd put some extra chocolate bars that I'd spied because I thought I might miss out on them. I would turn around and I'd say, I'm so sorry about that. I've got a party. They'd be like, it's okay. And I'd get my food and I'd smile because once again, no one knew. And I'd go to my car. I'd drive to the other end of the car park and I'd put out my food and I'd eat my food and I'd take a drink. I'd open the car door and I'd throw up. I'd eat, drink, throw up. I was eating over every emotion you can imagine and I was throwing up everything you can imagine. What I felt about myself, what I thought you felt about me. I was getting rid of it all so I didn't have to feel it. I was getting rid of it so badly until my throat was so raw and I was throwing up blood, throwing up till I felt empty inside. I had nothing to feel. And then I took my rubbish and I tied it up and I would throw it down and I'd throw it away and leave it. Just like how I felt about myself, trash, rubbish. And I get in my car and drive away. And that, that was what I thought helped me do what I wanted to do. But now I was out of control. It was controlling me. It was doing the exact opposite. I was numbing my whole life. In recovery, I hear stories from people who have talked about how scared they've got at times when they've either binged or been eating in the car or doing something and they've almost crashed. I did crash. I totaled my car and I nearly killed myself and I could have hurt other people. And that's when I realized this is so far out of my control because I only wanted to hurt myself. I never ever intended to hurt other people, but that was now happening. So what do you do? What do you do when it's so out of control and you can't stop it? I said to my mum, I said, mum, I'm going to die. I need help. And that was probably the most fearless thing I've ever done in my life was ask for that help. And it was a simple and as hard as that. I didn't know the hard work was about to start, but I also didn't know that life was going to get absolutely incredible and amazing. And I didn't know to get to a great life. I had to feel pain. I had to move through the pain. I had to feel my emotions to get there. And that's hard. So, To get there, how do you get there? Honesty. Not just going to therapy. I had to be completely honest with myself. Now, this is very difficult when I have been trying to hide since about the age of six. I would tell strangers that my name was Victoria and they would go up to my mum and say, oh, we just met your daughter, Victoria. My mum would be like, Victoria? My daughter Susanna. So even at that age, I've already been trying to hide who I am. So, and it's not even the honesty of what you might say to your best friend, you like my new haircut. 
I'm talking about an honesty that is so deep that I wasn't even aware of. An honesty that isn't, I threw up 15 times today. I broke my diet. I binged. It was an honesty of why? Why did I go to binge? Why did I eat? What was, what happened that made me feel that I need to punish myself in any shape or form? What was the actual feelings? That rigorous honesty is what I was being taught to do. A few months ago, I, I was asked, no, a few months ago, I was told that surely I regret my bulimia because it's taken years of my life away. Not one bit. There's not one bit of me that regrets my bulimia. It has not taken life years away from me. It's given me years. Years that now I look forward to where I don't diet. I'm not constantly going to diet clubs or just solely focused on my weight or trying to numb my pain. Don't get me wrong. Like there are moments when if I get stressed, the old voices will come in and say, you need to eat something. Or my favorite is you need to lose weight because that will sort it out. It won't sort it out. I don't need to lose weight. What I need to do is deal with the feeling. It took up so much headspace and actually stopped me doing whatever I wanted to do with my life. Recovery has taught me amazing things and I'm still learning these things. And I think one of the most important things that it's taught me is about the power of connection. My granny died in April and I was very close to her. And she always said two things to me every single day, keep structure and keep connection. And those are two of the things that actually help my recovery today, especially connection. Because the more I find I connect with other people and share my story, the more I hear about them, the more empathy I have for other people, less judgmental I become. But it wasn't just about connection to other people, I had to connect with myself. And as a bulimic, I was separated. And as I told you, I was throwing up. I mean, at the worst, I was throwing up 15 times a day. Um, my teeth were starting to disintegrate. disintegrate. I couldn't couldn't digest any food at all. Every time I wanted recovery, I just would relapse. So I had to trust something that I've never, I don't know the outcome to. And that was to relearn to eat, to trust that I could live a life without being dependent on something to numb my feelings or control my weight. And it does work. And it did work and it is working because I'm here telling you about it today. But that's only because I keep that constant connection with myself as well. I had to relearn to eat just, I had to go back to probably, I would say how a baby learns to eat. I had to eat foods that I hadn't been taught were good for me. I thought salads and veg are what I was meant to eat. But I didn't realize my body couldn't digest. Salads are pretty hard to digest. You wouldn't give a baby a salad. So I had to eat foods that would help my digestion. And I started to learn that while I do that and learn about that, I start to feel better. And as I started to feel better, I started to move my body. I started to want to take care of my body. I started to see changes and all that kind of worked together. And I started to feel better in my head. And I didn't want to lie. I didn't want to deceive. I didn't want to manipulate. So recovery, it's always a work in progress, but it's really, it's really important. And that connection to yourself and to other people is something that I will always deeply nurture. My friend shared with me a quote um, that she had heard and I want to share with you too, because it really hits home for me and I hope it might with you. It's one day we are going to die together and I want to live knowing that I loved you. So, thank you. <laughs>